Welcome to the show. After the success of last week's dessert, I've taken Rob up on his offer because I reckon this is my lucky kitchen. Today we're going to do three desserts, a creme brulee, a chocolate fondant and an apple pear and blueberry crumble. So all you sweet tooths, stick around. Come join me in the kitchen. To start things off today, we're going to make creme brulee. A lot of people think it's a fancy dessert that you can't make, but uh, you know, once you've got your blowtorch, which are readily available and not too expensive, uh, you're ready to go. It's a, a custard based dessert and uh, you make quite a thick custard in there and then you do a toffee coating on the top. So it's not too difficult and uh, you should certainly give it a go. To make it you'll need 3 egg yolks, 200 mils of milk, 50 mils of cream, 1 teaspoon of vanilla and 50 grams of caster sugar. To start things off, we're going to uh, put our milk and our cream into a saucepan. Put it on a medium heat, we don't want it to burn, but we want it to uh, certainly come up to the simmer. So while that's heating up, we can move on to our next step. Take your egg yolks and your sugar and your vanilla and give it all a really good whisk together. If you have vanilla beans, then uh, you can add them to your milk as opposed to adding it to here. Vanilla beans offer a more authentic flavour, um, but I mean, vanilla essence is much more available. But if you can get vanilla beans, of course use them. You just want to keep stirring your egg yolks until the sugar's dissolved into them. You don't want to get too much air into this mixture at any point in time, so it's different to a lot of other egg-based desserts because air in it will uh, create a sort of a, a light fluffy texture when we actually want a dense texture. So just using your whisk to sort of stir it around, you just want your sugar to dissolve. That's why we use caster sugar and not white sugar. Uh, white sugar takes too long and, and it doesn't dissolve as well as caster sugar. So now our milk's come to the boil, we can uh, get in with our eggs, just a little bit at a time. The reason why we do this is so your egg doesn't sort of um, curdle through it and so you don't get sort of lumps of cooked egg in there. Whereas this way you can sort of put a little bit in, give it a stir, and it helps to cook it evenly. So just keep adding it till it's all in there. Once again, try not to add too much air to your mixture now as well. Once you've got it all in, just pop it straight back into your pot. And now we're going to ditch the whisk and move on to a spoon. You just want to make sure you've got this on a low heat and you just want to keep stirring it gently. Once again, about not putting the air into it, but uh, making sure you keep moving it around, keep your, keep your spoon lifting it off the bottom because you don't want it to um, cook unevenly. There's two ways of cooking creme brulee. You can either cook it out on the stove like this or you can uh, set it in the oven in the moulds. I prefer this way here because um, it doesn't take quite as long, you don't have to watch it for as long and I find that by setting it you get a better result. What, what sets this custard is the egg yolks so you have to be careful not to overcook them or they won't actually set it and uh, you'll get an eggy flavour to it as well. Uh, when I say an eggy flavour that means like a, a cooked egg flavour as opposed to just the creaminess of the, um, the set yolks. To tell when it's cooked you just want it to coat the back of the spoon. So now you can see that that's thick enough to coat it, so uh, that means it's ready to go into the moulds. Some people strain their mixture, I don't really worry about it. And I find that when you strain it, it, it causes more air to go in it, so you don't get the, the result we're after. But just into your ramekins, and you just want to fill it up to the rim, like this. And this is the right amount for two, which we have there. Now, to knock some of that excess air out of it, if you have got some in there, just give them a little tap on the bench like that. And that'll get all the air to come out. And now we're just gonna pop these in the fridge for a minimum of about two to three hours. I've already made one earlier though, just so I can give you guys a look. And uh, you can see it's quite a bit firmer there. 
What you want to look for is more of a uh, like a jelly consistency, more than what you would normally look for in a custard. So you just want it to be firm on top, but um, press back against your finger as well. You want resistance there. And uh, you should be able to move it around a bit without it running out of the container, because you need your custard to be nice and firm, because it needs to hold the toffee casing on top. So we'll take some sugar. For this one, use white sugar. It works better. Caster sugar is too fine, so it'll, uh, it'll tend to burn before it turns into a caramel. So add your sugar on top. Don't worry about getting too much on because uh, we're going to tip it off anyway. So once you've got a coating on top like that, and then I always like to sprinkle a little bit extra back on, just so we get a nice thick toffee. But that ensures that we get a nice even coating. From there, we just need to start warming it up. So you just want to sort of melt the sugar on the top. You don't want to start it colouring yet. So from about um, 10 centimetres away, just start warming the sugar. You'll see it starting to dissolve. But make sure you do this nice and evenly because you want all of it to be at sort of the same degree. So when you get to this point now that most of your sugar is melted, you can move your blowtorch a little bit closer and start getting that toffee colour that you're used to. The bitterness of the toffee really um, contrasts with the sweetness of the custard and that's why this dish works so well. So once you've finished caramelising it, just leave it to set for about one or two minutes because you want that toffee to cool down, become nice and crisp and create a shell for them to break through into their nice smooth custard. So creme brulee, something you'd normally only see in restaurants but not too hard to make at home. Coming up next, we're going to make a chocolate fondant. So all you chocolate lovers, stick around. Mm -hmm.